Greetings folks. In this video I'm going to talk about the basics of RC electronics and how you connect everything up and transmitters and receivers and try and demystify some of that confusing uh, terminology. And also if you have questions about other basic RC stuff that you think I might be able to help you with just leave a comment down below and I'll add it to the list of videos to do. First thing to know is that there are different radio systems uh, and they don't talk to each other so if you have one transmitter you have to have the specific receiver that works with that transmitter. My favourite system is FR Sky and the Tyrannus radios. Here's a couple of different Tyrannus radios. Uh, they work on the ACCST protocol uh, and it's also called D8, D16 and LR12 and if you look uh, on a website for a receiver to go with your FR, FR Sky transmitter. You have to find ACCST receivers and, and D8, D16 or LR9. Uh, there's probably my favourite receiver which is the FR Sky X6R. Works with all the Tyrannus radios. Here's the Fly Sky radio, another very popular one. Uh, budget price but very well featured. Uh, and that works on the AFHDS and the AFHDS 2A protocol. So you have to buy an AFHDS 2A receiver or an AFHDS receiver. This is the Hobby King uh, TR6A V2. Works with this radio. This is the FlySky FS IA6B. Works with the FlySky radio and also the Turnergy equivalent of this radio. Here are some other radios that came with uh, ready to fly models. This is a Volantex RC radio. I have no idea what protocol it works on, but comes with a receiver, so make sure you don't lose the receiver. Uh, unless you can find out what the protocol is, then you can find another receiver that works on that protocol. This is the only receiver that's going to work with this radio, so that's why I've got it Velcroed to the back of it there. This is a Detrim radio that came with another ready-to-fly mod model. Same thing. Uh, it doesn't tell me what the protocol it is, but it comes with the receiver. This is the only receiver that I have that works with this radio. Another popular system is Spectrum. I don't use Spectrum at all, but Spectrum uses the DSM2 and DSMX protocol, uh, which allows you to operate those safe select sort of setups, the um, auto leveling. Uh, spectrum specific uh, features. So if you want to buy those planes that have those safe select and work on DSM2, DSMX, you have to have a spectrum radio basically. Futaba is another system and that uses the FASST protocol. So again, you can only use FASST receivers with Futaba. Now you can get different radio radio frequency modules that will fit into the back uh, which will allow you to use other receivers with the uh, transmitter but as they come and stock standard uh, they'll only use their own protocol receivers. So number one thing to remember different radio brands have different protocols you have to use the receiver that works with that particular radio. The basics of radio control involve a transmitter sending a signal to a receiver and then the receiver sends the signal onto servo, motor, all that sort of stuff. But this is the first step to understand. The receiver has to be bound to the transmitter. They sort of have to be introduced so they know that they're talking to each other. Different radio systems have different methods of binding, basically, but usually there'll be a, a button to push. I've done a few videos on that before, so I'll put a link down below. Uh, you have to work out how to bind your receiver to your uh, radio. There's a, another system where you need to put a little plug in. Now receivers need power. They usually run on about 5 volts. I have a 5 volt battery here and let's plug that in to the receiver and I've got a red flashing light. That means that I haven't bound this receiver to the radio yet. So I'll do that right now. So now we have receiver and transmitter talking to each other. We have power going into the receiver. So now I can plug in a servo and see if something is actually working. These are all the servo pins here. Individual channels. This is a six channel radio. So we have six spots that we can plug things into. 
plus another one called XBus, which we'll talk about a bit later on. Now, I have to make sure I have something programmed up in the radio. And let's have a look at what I've done. So this is a sort of a standard setup for uh, any model. I've decided to have the aileron stick operating channel one. There's the aileron stick. Elevator stick operating channel two. There it is there. The throttle is on channel three. There's the throttle. And the rudder is on channel four. There's that one there. This is a six channel radio. So I have two spare channels I can do other things with. Things like opening bomb doors, uh, lowering the landing gear, panning a camera around, turning lights on and off. Uh, so on channel five, I have channel 5 assigned to this switch here and channel 6 I have assigned to this slider over here. Can you see that? There we go. And I'll show you how they work in, in a little while. So if I plug a servo into channel 1 then I'll be able to operate it with the uh, aileron stick. So let's do that now. You have to be careful about polar polarity as well. See that says uh, the minus is up the top, the signal is down the bottom. So brown is minus, make sure we have that up the top. Plug that into channel one. And there we go. The aileron stick is operating channel one. All right, so let's try the elevator. We'll, elevator's on channel two. We'll plug the servo into channel two. Servo in channel two. Now, elev the elevator stick is operating. And this, if you're having problems with your model, this is a really good way to check things out. Just have a spare servo so that you can plug it in individually to each channel and make sure it's actually working. Now let's, let's see what happens if we plug it in up the wrong way, wrong polarity. So if we plug that in, that's up the wrong way now. And with this particular setup, it's doing nothing. Sometimes the servo will go full over one way, uh, but it's not doing it with this one. So let's try what else we try. Let's try channel five. We have channel five on this switch here. Channel five is operated by this switch here. So we have uh, full left, middle position, full right. And finally, let's try channel six, which is on this slider over here. We can use this for panning a camera around. You can see how that's operating the servo sort of smoothly like that. Okay, so they're the basics of connections. Now, I put the voltage into channel three. It can actually go on any channel at all uh, because all those minuses and pluses, are, they're all connected all the way through. So uh, let's put, so I've plugged the battery into channel six and of course I can't now use channel six uh, to operate the servo. So you can see it all still works because it's still getting power from the battery all the way through. So you'll notice that the power is going to the receiver and it's also going out to the servos. So these days with electric models, we don't usually have a separate battery to power the uh, receiver. We have a battery eliminator circuit or BEC. That's what BEC stands for, Universal Battery Eliminator Circuit. So we're eliminating this battery and we'll use the flight battery to power the receiver and to power the motor as well. This now just becomes the battery. This reduces the voltage from the 12 volts of the flight battery down to five volts to operate the servos and the receiver. We'll just put that in channel, in channel three there. Plug the flight battery in and same thing. Receivers powered up, servos working. So that's a battery eliminator circuit is just a voltage regulator really. Now what we normally do is use an ESC or electronic speed controller which has a BEC built in. So this has one of these fellas on board inside and as well as controlling the motor what by these three leads here it also provides five volts for the receiver and servos. There we go again that's powered up Servo works. Okay, so now let's connect it all up. We have a receiver. We have a servo plugged into, say, channel one. We'll power up the receiver using the onboard BEC from the electronic speed controller. I'll put that in channel three. 
which is also, also the, the throttle which will control the speed of the motor of course. Connect up the motor via the three ESC wires. Now if you find that your motor is spinning in the wrong direction, you can just swap over any of these two wires and the motor will spin in the other direction quite happily. Now we'll connect up a battery to the speed controller to provide power for everything. And we get those beepy sounds from the motor telling us that everything's good. Servo's working. I better hold this properly. Get that in shot using the throttle lever. That motor's turning that way. Let's swap them over. Now the motor's turning that way. So there we go, that's the basics of connecting up your radio controlled plane. Transmitter, talking to the receiver. The receiver has been bound to the transmitter so they understand each other. Servo, plugged into one of the channels on the receiver. The receiver is getting power from the BEC on the speed controller. And that power is coming from the flight battery through the ESC and it's also going to the motor. With a lot of radios, the first four channels are set. Channel one will be ailerons, channel two will be elevator, channel three will be throttle, and channel four will be rudder, and you, you can't change that. With the FR Sky system, you can put anything anywhere on any channel. That's part of the beauty of the FR Sky system. It's, it's uh, kind of totally free and unrestricted. Now you may have noticed as well as the six individual six channels here, we have an, uh, an output called SBUS. Uh, so PWM is uh, what operates servos in a normal way. So we plug all the servos into these individual uh, channels, individual wires going out for each different channel. Instead of sending the information for each channel down individual wires, this sends all 16 channels in this case down one wire. Of course on the other end you need to split the 16 channels out so that they can operate servos individually. When you're working with a flight control board, like this Air 3 flight control board, uh, you can send all the information via SBUS. So in that case you would just plug the SBUS cable in, sends all 16 channels through to the flight control board, and then the servos plug into the flight control board. So when you're using a flight control board, what you're doing is you just send your intentions via the radio to the receiver. Those sort of intentions get sent through to the flight control board. The flight control board interprets what you're telling it to do, depending on which mode it's, it's set to, and then sends the signal out to the servos to get them to behave in the sort of a modified way. So as you can see, using SBUS simplifies the connection a lot. In fact, a lot of flight control boards, you can't even connect individual channels to the flight control board from the receiver. You have to use SBUS or another serial protocol. But I'll talk more thoroughly about these sorts of connections in the next video.